Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. So I'm testing out the functionality of the uh, new battery in this 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV of mine. And uh, I'm in the middle of a trip down to uh, the LA Auto Show and it just happened to work out that I was able to drain the battery down to right around 10%. I'm actually right now just looking for overall time. I'm trying to do a screen capture through the app on my phone, but that's actually not the greatest for Electrify America either because they don't show uh, charging speeds in real time. Uh, they don't update it at in the moment. And so what you end up is every 30 seconds or 45 seconds or so it might refresh, but it still kind of gives uh, a decent picture over the course of a charge, you know, how, how quickly you're charging, how much you can expect. The car itself also estimated from 10 to 80% to be about an hour. So right now it's estimating 40 minutes and we're 20 minutes into or 19 to 20 minutes into the session. So uh, the Bolt EV is estimating about an hour. Uh, based on what I'm seeing here, that sounds about right too. And the old rule of thumb that I used to use with the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack when it was charging on a 100 amp charger is that you would add about 1% of capacity per minute charging. Now, if you increase the speed, obviously that would go up. And as far as this Bolt EV is concerned, it seems like it still might be fooled, might think it's tracking a full to 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. So maybe it still hasn't fully learned the 64, 65, 66 kilowatt hour usable. Um, but even if you add that 10% capacity, right, going from 100 amp to 150 amp charging, well, so especially under that 50% battery mark, you're going to be adding a whole lot more than 1% per minute. Basically from 10% to 80%, you're adding 70% capacity. That shouldn't really take more than an hour, even after you account for the taper, uh, that starts right around 45 to 50 to 55 percent depending on how warm the battery is. Now the Electrify America charger right now is still outputting 54 kilowatts. It shows 54 kilowatts in the app. How much of that is going to battery conditioning? I don't know. All I know is I can hear the fans, things like that. So uh, the one thing that I wanted to note, I've noticed with my own experiences and then I think Tom Malagniad's state of charge He's noticed this as well, or he observed it as well, when he tested the 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EV, uh, the charging curve w was really wonky, and he starts his charge at 0% battery. Now, he's thinking maybe the battery was warm, whatnot, and to be fair, in the times that I've observed this, the battery was also probably warm, but I don't think it has as much to do with battery temperature as it does with the battery state of charge. Because I think Tom's test, he might be creating some of the results he's seen. And it's not necessarily his fault, right? Most automakers put a significantly larger bottom battery buffer than GM does. GM seems to do almost the opposite of what a lot of other automakers do where you see like Tesla or Ford or, or some of these other automakers have a fairly significant buffer where when you hit zero, you could still be driving for another 5, 10, 15, 20 miles um, and you still have maybe as much as full power all the way down to zero percent they don't have as much of a buffer up top. And so when you charge those vehicles to full, you lose all regen. It puts a huge amount of strain on the battery, uh, increases battery wear, uh, you know, reduces overall battery life. Whereas GM puts that buffer up at the top. And so when you charge all the way to full, you're not as stressing the battery as much. You still have regen, that sort of thing. So 
seems like a completely flipped uh, approach, but it also means that if you're going to be doing a test like that and you draw a line in the sand and say, I'm going to start the test when it's zero, and I think the justification is that nobody is typically going to go below zero to start their charging session. But if you look at the way people are actually driving in the real world, they're not actually going to zero percent. And, and in fact, even 10 percent is probably the lowest most people are comfortable with. And I would say maybe they're not even comfortable going to 10 percent. So I think if you're... If you're testing for capacity, then then sure, say, I want to know how much capacity is actually available between 0% and 100%. If you're testing for usable charging curve, I think 10% to 80% is reasonable. Um, but I think that realistically, it might actually be more like 20 to 70%. Um, it really depends, but, um, and then so, of course some cars are going to excel at it no matter what, right? So, uh, Hyundai and Kia, uh, Kia put their eGIMP platforms together really well. It doesn't even seem to matter. You just plug in whenever and you're going to be full in 40 to 45 minutes. Or you can leave in 10 to 15 to 20 minutes and drive for another two hours. So having a standard for the charge window that you want to look at, I think is important. I just don't know that for charging profiles, zero to a hundred percent is necessarily valid. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit behind, but not, not too far. Um, but we're still, we're, almost up to 60% now and we're still charging at over 40 kilowatts so this is this is what I was saying and this doesn't necessarily update very well in terms of yeah so we're at 60% right now so we've added 51% in 34 minutes so based on what i've seen if the battery isn't overheated um, and you start right around 10 percent yeah i think hitting 80 percent in about one hour is a uh, certainly reasonable yeah this is one of the more impressive sites they do have one charger down it looks like and then one cord there um, these are both up, it looks like. Members only. Credit card unavailable. Yep, so... Out of 10 chargers, there's uh, one charger down and one post or one plug down. So overall, I guess as far as sites are concerned, oh, and then one credit card reader. So out of 10 chargers, one credit card, one plug, and one entire charger are, are down. So. I mean, not great, but I, I do think that people forget that gas stations don't always have 100% uptime either, yet people seem to pretend like they do for some reason. 53% in 38 minutes. So this is where we're going to start to slow, and this 36 kilowatt this is representing that taper point where we're getting down to about 100 amp. And so at this point, I would say, yeah, this is where you could expect at this at this charging rate is where you would expect to be adding about 1% a minute. Um, so we'd have at least probably 20 minutes left to get to 80% just based on that heuristic. And this is uh, the part where 
the other the other issue that I see with some people who are testing the Bolt EV's charging rate is they leave the car on the entire time. And what I've noticed is if you have the Bolt EV on while it's charging, it actually has a different charging profile than it does if you do not. Like if you leave the car off, the car will, will charge, I'd say at a significantly higher rate under 50%. And the reason for that is for whatever reason, when you turn the car on, it more actively applies battery thermal management. And then also it seems to want to condition other things like the cabin or maybe the DC to DC converter for the 12 volt battery. I'm not sure all of the things that it's doing, but it definitely consumes a lot more power when turned on and charging than it does when turned on and not charging or charging while off. So I think that's something else. It could also explain why people have different results than what I've observed is because I'm usually not trying to track the charging session minute by minute. You do kind of want to know that occasionally just for graphing or whatever. The truth of the matter is all you really need to do is have milestones where you check, oh, what is it charging at at a certain point? And then also what are the, what is the average charge rate over time? And those are things that you can determine without having to watch every frame of, of every moment of charging. I think people actually might gum up their own tests simply by trying to watch the car charge. Now, someone did bring up a very valid criticism as you know, some of the cars like the Kia EV6 that I reviewed, you can actually check what the charging speed is without turning the car on. Simply opening the door or whatever, or just sitting in the car with your key on, it will display in kilowatt what the, uh, what the current charging rate is, and the car doesn't need to be on to do that. So, I mean, that is an opportunity for GM to provide that kind of information because I, I use it, right? I don't want to turn the car back on. When I was driving the EV6, I just left the car off, but I jumped in and looked at what the DIC was displaying. So at this point, we could hit 80% uh, in under an hour. I guess the thing I need to make sure I, I emphasize is the reason I can turn the car on now and observe it and not affect the charging curve is because the Bolt EV will draw additional power from the charger to run onboard systems, cooling, battery, cabin conditioning, all of that, but it will only pull up to 150 amp. So if the car can charge at 150 amp, those systems will reduce its maximum charging rate, which will slow the charge, which is why people who have the car on while it's charging, observe different charging speeds. But once you pass the threshold where the battery starts to taper, you're free to turn the car on um, because it, there's excess power available from the charger that's not going to impact your, your charging curve. So right now I could turn the heater on and the, this power might dip, but um, it'll recover back up to 34 kilowatt because even the heater's max pull won't exceed 150 amps drawn uh, through the CCS port at this point. We're getting pretty close to that 80% mark. All right, so technically we've already added that 70%, right? Because we're at 79% starting at nine but it looks like it's gonna be just about 55 minutes exactly to go from 9% to 80%. Um, it'll probably, one will tick over before the other obviously, but I don't know why it's saying five minutes until 80. Yeah, so it's 55, so probably 55 and change. Now the thing that's interesting about this too is 
again, like I said, Tom, yeah, 80%, some, somewhere 55 and change. And that's starting from 9%, not 10%. Now, um, you know, something that like Tom, um, I think he ended up taking like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. And this bottom portion, no way should ever take 20 minutes to go 9%, right? We saw this already. Um, where at this sort of band in the charging curve, it was adding about one and a half percent per minute, not one percent per minute. So, so basically, well under an hour, you can go from 10 percent to 80 percent. But again, I like to look at what I'm doing differently. One, not starting at zero, starting at about nine to 10 percent. Two, I, I know that the battery was well conditioned. Um, and three, I leave the car off until it hits a point where it's no longer drawing 150 amps. And at that point, I can turn the car on again and it doesn't affect the charge. All right, so there you have it, 9% to 80% in just over 55 minutes, um, well under an hour to, to add that section of battery. Like I said, the things that I did differently though, um, in particular, is I didn't start at 0%, which does seem to be a trigger, though it could also just be battery conditioning. It's 64 degrees right now. I just got off of a 500 mile drive. The battery should be well warmed and conditioned. Um, but I mean, it would probably be toward the warmer side. And then again, the other thing is not turning the car on when it can draw power away from the charging uh, to use for other systems, right? So you're not effectively charging the battery, you're running battery conditioning, you're running cabin conditioning, you're running pumps, you're running, um, you know, DC to DC converters, lights, whatever. So all of that scavenges uh, energy away. Now, the one thing that I would say, the one caveat that I would say is it's possible that 80% is not 80% because it does seem like the BMS is still learning. So if you look at the energy added, that's only giving me a usable energy capacity of about 59 60 kilowatt hours. So I think that, you know, in, in Tom's defense, I think that what I'm seeing displayed right now isn't the true capacity of this Bolt EV. And so it's charging to 80%, 10% to 80% in 55 minutes is the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack time it might not be the 66 kilowatt hour battery pack time, but the 66 kilowatt hour battery pack time should scale with about the same increase in, in capacity. So if it's not 55 uh, minutes from 10% to 80%, it should be right around 60 minutes from 10% to 80%. So still, again, that 20 minute discrepancy uh, shouldn't, be needed to cover that bottom 10%. And so that I think is where the disconnect is happening. And like I said, it could be possible that, that GM is just letting the battery get dangerously low at 0% to the point that starting a DC fast charge from that point requires a really, really delicate handling uh, in order to not harm the cells while charging. And if that's the case, maybe they need to do something where let it charge to five to 10% on that really conservative charging profile. And really it's probably from zero to 5% on that really conservative charging profile and then switch the profile up so that it can go straight back up to that solid 52, 53, 54 kilowatt that I see basically from 5% all the way to 50 to 55%. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was useful. I need to, to go, uh, you know, get some sleep, rest up and, and get ready for the LA Auto Show. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.